What makes Crosstalk effective? How has Crosstalk's global ministry impacted the world? And what about the local church? Join us for an in-depth interview with the voice of Crosstalk and Crosstalk instructor, Dr. Brian French. Welcome to Crosstalk, a Christian podcast whose goal is for us to encourage each other to not only increase our knowledge about the Bible, but to take the next step beyond information into transformation. Our goal is to bring the Bible to life into all our lives. I'm Nathan Norman. While Kent is teaching in Cuba this week, we take a break from the Psalms to explore the inner workings of Crosstalk Global with Dr. Brian French. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, so thanks for having me on this side of the glass. This is kind of fun. It's weird. You're in my seat. I'm in your seat, but we're actually still in each other's seat because this is all satellite and remote. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting because if I say satellite, it's not really satellite. It's over the internet. But you're in my generation. We understand that. But if I say satellite to the younger generation, they think of they don't know what to think of, right? Because they don't have that. No, they think of Elon Musk and getting some kind of internet signal from yeah. a satellite. That's mm-hmm. probably about it. That's that's it. I did mention pagers to my young adult group last week, and uh, half of them didn't know what I was talking about. Fantastic. Actually, I just saw on Facebook today that someone said, does anyone remember the time where you went to the movies and they asked you to silence your pager? <laughs> They don't even ask you to silence your phone anymore. They just they don't <laughs> eject you in, <laughs> into outer space, I think, if you violate it. That's right. Oh, goodness. OK, so, Brian, I teased it a little bit in the introduction, but what is your role at Crosstalk Global? My role is that I'm currently an instructor with our USA cohort in Salina, Kansas. We've been meeting for the last couple of years and we will be meeting one more time in January and one more time in May of 2024. Wow. Now, it's encouraging to hear I, from my perspective, as I keep reading articles about the crisis of pastors, there's there's less and less pastors in the workforce in America. I mm-hmm. think Crosstalk Global America is going to be an essential tool in helping to train people in order to serve in our churches in the coming generations. I forgot what the numbers were, but but the number of pastors under the age of 40, which is neither of us anymore, <laughs> is minuscule. And uh, and that's that's disconcerting for the future. And so I think something like Crosstalk, where we can come along and help train people with skills based training for the future is uh, is going to be key. And and it's affordable. (laughs) Right. And one of the things that we've found interesting in the Salina cohort is that uh, even two or three of them will meet on a regular basis between our monthly meetings just to compare notes and chat and, hey, are we on the right track and how are you doing? And so we're starting to see that kind of internal uh, coaching and comparing notes and sort of working when you're not being watched, working when you don't, you know, you're not being monitored in any way because there really is a desperate need and a desire for better effective biblical communication, not just around the world, but in the country itself. Mm. Uh, People want that, churches want that, and pastors want that. And once they start putting in the hard work, they're starting to see results that are really paying off for biblical application. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. And, And I guess the secondary result of what we're doing is you're connecting pastors to each other. And pastoral ministry in general is a very lonely ministry. Pastors across the board in centuries have said they've had a hard time connecting with other people because of the virtue of the role. And I know, you know, when I used to go to the comic book store every week and someone would find out I'm a pastor, all of a sudden they would apologize for every swear word they ever said. (laughs) That's right. And the conversations we used to have were always guarded, right? So it's like, oh, well, that's, there's another relationship. Right. Blown out of proportion. But but now with crosstalk, you're intentionally connecting pastors with each other and putting them, I would say, in a very intimate conversation because they're having to critique each other's sermons, which is hard to do. And once they find out that they're for each other, not against each other, now now you have a a fraternity, if you will. You have a a family that can uh, can support each other within biblical preaching and outside of biblical preaching. Right. I I think that's a great insight. One of the challenges of uh, traditional ministerial meetings where pastors come together is that sometimes there's just a level of comparison and competition that isn't warranted, but you kind of feel the feelings of jealousy or you feel the feelings of why am I here? I'm doing things that you aren't doing and I'm not on the same page. So crosstalk allows you to come with the same agenda. We want to get better. 
And it does very quickly put aside the ego of I'm better than you. I'm worse than you because we all kind of start off not really knowing how to communicate the Bible. It's why God communicated to us in the first place, right. because we didn't know who he was or what he wanted from us. And so to then learn that and communicate it to others, it's a humbling experience. And to watch people grow in that ability, it really does help people understand, hey, we are on the same team. We are playing for the same coach. Let's get better. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good insight. I, I remember reading something years ago that when people in any profession share their achievements, it, it becomes one-upmanship, it becomes competition. And when they share their failures, it becomes a, a family, right? And mm -hmm. crosstalk, <laughs> for those of you who haven't gone through it, there's nothing like putting your heart and soul into a sermon, preaching your guts out, and then having someone like Brian or Kent rip you apart <laughs> lovingly, <laughs> but, but just, just ripping you up and down one side or the other. And, you know, I, I can remember the first time it happened to me in seminary with Kent and I just, and I fought him, man. And I fought him and I fought him and I fought him until he, he finally said one thing and I realized I was wrong. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and, and it was like, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've spent all week on this thing and and you've just figured it out in three seconds, right? That uh, is very true. That is very true. It is, it is a humbling learning experience where, again, even the instructors are consistently being coached and coming together for additional training, additional learning that helps us to be better. Yeah. And it's good. And once once you get past that initial uh, humiliation. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, like you said, suddenly you lose ego and it becomes freeing to say, I want to grow and I can get better. And I want to get better because I want to know God better and I want to serve his people better. Right. And you get to see that happening in the lives of so many other people. And you begin to celebrate the wins on a far bigger global scale. You get outside the four walls of your own ministry uh -huh. or your own teaching and preaching context. And you start to hear about, hey, I'm preaching this. I'm getting better. And it's it, the family metaphor, I think, is right. It's cheering on the those who maybe struggled with it before and now are and you get to come alongside and say, hey, you did great on that. Uh, one of my students uh, in the, the USA seminar did a fantastic job on communicating a message from Genesis recently just in our cohort training over Zoom and he had 12 minutes to do it. Hmm. And so what what possible good sermon can you do in 12 minutes, right? <laughs> right, right? But the way he constructed it once he had the correct big idea, uh, I kept notes. And I started writing down the way that he communicated it because that's going to influence the way I communicate it the next time. It was so well done mm -hmm. for a Zoom meeting in a forced classroom environment. Very impactful. Very impactful. Wow. Praise God. That's always encouraging to see. Iron sharpens iron. Right. So, well, let's, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. You are a pastor at a church. Tell us a little bit about your current role in ministry. Sure. I am currently at New Design Church in Frederick, Maryland. I've been there just over one year. So I feel like I've really got the culture and the city and the people all figured out. Uh, <laughs> so ministry is just coming so easy now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just just kidding. We're in we're in the middle of some vibrant change and some exciting things that are happening. Before that, I was in New York State for 18 years. And before that, I was in Canada for a number of years, which is actually how I met Dr. Kent in the first place. Okay, so let's get into that. How did you meet Kent? Well, I was uh, called into ministry. I knew I was going to go to this particular seminary. That's all that God had really revealed to my heart at the time. And I thought that I would be taking preaching courses at seminary from a family friend who was the uh, preaching chair of the, of the seminary. And just as I had signed up to go to seminary, he resigned to take uh, a role, a senior pastor role at a local church. Uh. And so I looked through the course catalog and there were only two preaching courses offered. And I picked the one that wouldn't make me go to class on Fridays. <laughs> 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 I wanted to keep the Monday through Thursday, three day weekend uh, into my schedule. And Dr. Kent's class happened to be on a Monday morning. Wow. And so I went 
with the utmost of godly intentions. Right. <laughs> I wasn't sure, like, how how could this person measure up to this person that I wanted to learn from? Yes. That yeah. Wasn't going to be teaching there anymore. And so I went in thinking this will never be as good as I thought it was, but we'll just have to make it work. And as we went around the room and Dr. Kent shared, asked us to share, why are we taking this class? Uh, he then shared, of course, why preach it all? Uh, his very first lecture and everything. Wait, wait, that wait, he, wait, 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 slow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so when you shared your reason, you said, cause you didn't want to take Friday classes. Is that correct? Uh, I may not have said that on the very first day. I may have uh, felt that out a little bit more carefully. Uh, As the relationship and, progressed, you, uh, right. <laughs> you revealed the truth. Okay. And, All right. And been a little more uh, careful, but um, what uh, Dr. Kent shared and his understanding of big idea and mm. uh, how that needs to be understood is exactly how I had been uh, taught preaching under my family friend and under an elder of our local church, but it, it had far more clarity and mm. it had far more depth and far more uh, implications, many more implications that I had ever thought of. And as he started to talk about his philosophy of ministry and how preaching affected the local church, it resonated with me that that's how I also want to do ministry. I think that's how God has wired me as well. And so one course with Dr. Kent, Intro to Preaching, turned into two, turned into four, oh. turned into, well, if I have to do an internship somewhere in seminary, I wonder if there's an opportunity at Dr. Kent's church and wow. could I you know, do something there? And I learned very quickly that... It's a risky thing to say to Dr. Kent, I'm interested in volunteering. <laughs> and many of the listeners will know if you walk up to your pastor and say, I'm interested in volunteering, where can I serve? The odds are the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't uh, tell you how many people over the years I have learned have the ability to play guitar or piano or sing like professionally years after I've known them. They hide <laughs> that fact because they know if the church knows you are leading worship. <laughs> That's right. Or you have a skill set or you have this yes. gift with people like it. It just it just clicks. <laughs> and so a spot was found for, a, you know, a part time volunteer role that turned into full time. And we have full, kind full of time volunteer full, full time employment, actually, okay, on good, graduation. Good, good. And we continued the process through accreditation and licensing uh, and ordination through the denomination uh, that we serve in. And it just kind of continued from there. And Dr. Kent went from uh, preaching professor to boss to good friend. Good to CEO of the company. <laughs> <laughs> I just today had Facebook say, hey, you've known Kent for 12 years. And I, of course, being the person I am, reposted that and said, Facebook, you don't know what you're talking about. He's been torturing me for much longer than that. <laughs> I decided not to say exactly when the year was that we that I met him and what uh, millennium it was when I first took <laughs> courses. So we'll let the listeners figure that out. Do, do you feel young? Do you feel like you're young? Oh, absolutely. I look See, in the I, mirror all the time and I, think, absolutely. I, we're very, very young. I do. And then I, I see all these demographics and numbers talking about me being middle-aged and whatnot, or go to the doctor's appointment and they're like, well, in your middle age years, I'm like, whoa, 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 I'm a child. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank whoa. you that's very right. much. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's, that's true. I'm actually... Uh, my my district leadership in our denomination just emailed me a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, congratulations, we're going to be celebrating your 25 years of service at wow. our uh, next regional conference. And I went, but I'm so young. You're right. <laughs> How is it possible that I have That's, 25 years of minute? When did I start? When I, I started was eight? <laughs> right, kindergarten or something, yeah. <laughs> it happens quick. It's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, so why did you get involved with Crosstalk? Uh, that's a great question. Well, part of it's the personal relationship with Dr. Kent, uh, having known him for years and knowing his passion and his dedication and excellence in training biblical communicators. Uh, when he was talking about the need uh, to uh, take what we were doing in some of our doctoral classes and begin to share that training and share that with those who don't have access to that, that resonated. And so again, 
I made the same uh, choice that I made so many years ago when I first said I have to do a uh, internship somewhere. I said, well, hey, how can I help? And so <laughs> as an opportunity came up, Kent phoned and said one of his famous lines, you may know it well. Hey, you know, uh, God loves you and has a plan for your life. Would you like to know what that plan is? <laughs> And he said, there's an opportunity to go serve as uh, an apprentice instructor in Myanmar, in Yangon, Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And so I said, absolutely. And just double check that with my wife really quickly, who <laughs> enthusiastically agreed yeah. and said, this is a, a great opportunity to take what you've learned and to help uh, take that global. So uh, definitely go ahead. And those were great times. We actually uh, went with Kent, uh, myself and Dr. Alan Miller, uh, at the time. And, and the three of us were able to go to Myanmar. And it was, again, just a humbling opportunity to see uh, the amount of work and dedication that goes into traveling to such a different area of the country and try to help people understand big idea communication and yet also big idea application that's relevant to their own culture. It was it was powerful and it was mind blowing to me to be part of that uh, early on. And so we've just kind of tracked with crosstalk ever since. And as the opportunity has come up, if the call has come, I've tried to say yes as much as possible. Excellent. Yeah. Now you're working in America. Uh, now America came up and that has gone well. I uh, do a little bit of work behind the scenes, helping out with any website or video type applications that might be needed. That's more rare than normal these days. But um, it's always been uh, as an instructor, as needed. Uh, if I need to come in and fill a spot because someone has, they can't make it for a week or two weeks, I can fill in for that time. I try to make that happen. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, I've tried to. And so that's how I, as Kent shared the vision for, we can't just keep what we're doing in the classroom setting. We have to start to take this to those who can't get access to the classroom setting. Uh, I said, absolutely. How can I help? And the Lord has led from there. Oh, good, good. And just so our listeners understand how high re highly regarded Brian is. <laughs> so when Brian was asked to join Crosstalk, he received a phone call. When, <laughs> when I was asked to join Crosstalk, I received an email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good uh, just, uh, but that's not the only reason i got involved in crosstalk <laughs> right it it obviously uh the one thing that that happens as uh you do begin to learn the need for biblical uh interpretation and communication and application that became the motivator to join crosstalk it wasn't that well it's kent asking and so there's a sense of obligation it was more than that. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we've seen just as we've served around the world and you serving in Vietnam would have likely seen this as well, that we need the Bible to know God's thoughts and God's heart. We can't figure that out on our own. Right. But that the Bible is hard to understand and apply effectively because we often miss the literary genre. We often miss the uh, early first century uh, New Testament world or the ancient Israelite world of the centuries before. So to take all of that and then say, and now you have to turn around and preach it to your culture effectively and practice it effectively personally is difficult. And it is a lifelong process. It's not just a, yeah. here's a four month program that you get at seminary to learn how to communicate the Bible effectively. And now you're uh, the greatest. Yeah. Right. So you, you do want to keep practicing. You do want to keep uh, learning because as we, as you have said, you think you come in going, Hey, I kind of know what I'm doing. And you start to present your ideas and you're, it's quickly humbling to <laughs> then, gosh, I, I didn't understand that. I didn't see that. And so the work ethic that is needed to have that lifelong pursuit that then needs to go worldwide, I am completely invested, not just in the relationships I've found in crosstalk, but also the mission of Crosstalk, that it really is about uh, helping, you know, God's voice be heard to as many cultures in the world that, that we can help train. Amen. No, that's good. Two things I picked up on that. One is Brian French 
pronounce genre in a very French way there. <laughs> so, so, so well done with that. Thank you. Probably the Canadian uh, ism yeah. <laughs> sneaking through just a little bit. It was good. I, I smiled as soon as it came out of your mouth. And the second thing is, uh, I, I'm not going to involve you in my comment here, but for me, I will sit and I will listen to sermons and I'll suffer through sermons, not in the crosstalk setting, just out in the wild, in the world with people who are like, oh, this is a great church, this is a phenomenal church, oh, huge church, huge mega church, right? Large church. And I'm sitting through suffering through a sermon poorly communicated, poorly explained, you know, not biblical at all. And it's very hard for me to not sit in the seat of judgment over the years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I want to say maybe about mm, five or six years ago, we were having a crosstalk gather gathering and one of our Romanian guys, Alex, he was given a presentation and he was talking about that struggle of not judging people whose sermons are absolute garbage. And he said that all of a sudden he realized this is a good pastor. He loves God. He loves his people, but he needs Crosstalk Global. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that phrase has just released that spirit of judgment <laughs> that right. I have, right? Because it, it, it's easy for, for us to look at people who are preaching poorly and say, what a terrible person, <laughs> right? Because if mm -hmm. you really loved God, it's not true at all. It, it's right. just, you don't know what you don't know. And unfortunately, very few areas of our lives, including including schools and including uh, prof other professions, they don't teach us to be lifelong learners right. and, and that none of us are, have arrived. And if we feel that we've arrived, we're actually at the uh, at the bottom. <laughs> right. And I think that's true. I think one of the metaphors that we use in in crosstalk when we're talking to all of our students is that uh, even when you get to the elite of an athletic or musical category, you are still practicing your craft, you're still wanting to learn and you're still wanting to get better. All the best athletes have coaches. And as soon as, as an athlete says, I'm now the best there ever was and the best that ever will be, uh, you shift from uh, I am going to do whatever it takes to win to I have made it, I can coast and I can be comfortable and you become a detriment to the team. Mm. And one of the things I look for when I sit through uh, other sermons as well is I've shifted from the judgment of that was really bad. <laughs> uh, it may just be a statement, uh, yeah. but I, I'm not sure how you got that from the text. What I have discovered is that most people will stay within the realm of the Bible without venturing into heretical teaching. It just won't be focused on that text. Mm. So it becomes, here's how I want to help change your life. <clears throat> here's a picture of a flame. Rather than, here's how I want to warm you to what God wants you to do. And here's the actual flame. Ah. And so can God use his word in incredible ways? Absolutely. And will a text that doesn't necessarily have that message, but has a biblical message, can that be used? Yes. Uh, and that's why I think you still see churches all around the world where in Myanmar, for example, one of the most effective ways they could preach was to give the gospel because that's all that had been modeled to them. Yeah. But they couldn't create disciples from other texts. They would just always come back to the gospel. And I think God honors that to a degree, but then how are they going to hone their craft to create mature followers of Jesus? What does it mean to apply this in your local context? That's where the skill starts to develop. And that's where the, rather than the picture of the flame of just saying, here's the same thing over and over again, we need to actually give you the whole counsel of God. And that takes skill and that takes training and that takes coaching. And that's where crosstalk is most effective is the commitment to continued coaching beyond, you know, here's the amount that you paid for a particular <laughs> time to get our classes. Yes. Yeah. We're, uh, we're a very economical organization because I, I, I've never been paid anything for crosstalk. Brian, have you paid anything? Uh, I can neither <laughs> confirm or deny. No. <laughs> no, it is, it is a volunteer and some things we do pay out of pocket. Uh, and we pay with time, obviously, uh, in some of my churches, we use just personal vacation to go and 
uh, do ministry with Crosstalk uh, because of the need to be back uh, in my local church and some other churches. No, we're going to grant you that time on top of your vacation. So there's always been some level of sacrifice. It's time away from family. It's time away from family, often in the summer uh, or on vacation times here in the United States. So there always is a cost. And yet consistently, the the ability to do coaching the ability to do uh, that lifelong connection and have those moments of, hey, how are you doing in this passage? Even a year or two later is worthwhile. Brian, thank you for all that. And honestly, I think I need to talk to preachers about bad preaching more often because every time I do, I feel a little more sanctified and I have a little, Hmm. a few more images that I can say, okay, okay, Uh, (laughs) calm down on the, calm down on the sermon judgment. Uh, but but it is an important thing, as you said, to realize that we're all lifelong learners, that we're all growing, that we all need coaching, and uh, and we're all in that process uh, together, and that we're in this together. So mm-hmm. lastly, how can people join in the work God is doing through Crosstalk Global? Well, I think one of the most obvious things that people can do is, as they think about the need for clear biblical communication, is to remember how a biblical sermon has impacted them. And then imagine that same impact happening in the lives of others around the world that don't often have this kind of access to training and coaching. So once you remember that, that it is a privilege to sit under uh, skilled communicators who are growing in their own ability to uh, interpret and personally apply to their own lives and then help to apply to the lives of their listeners what God has said uh, is worth our time, it's worth our prayers, and it's worth our finances. Um, It is not a lot of resources for someone to say, I would like to sponsor a cohort overseas. It is not a lot of resources to say, I want to sponsor a student and to figure out how they can do that. I just, I think it's one of the best investments that you can make for missions and ministry uh, for the advancement of God's kingdom. Mm. Uh, Secondly, uh, praying for crosstalk. There is a need for additional apprentices, additional instructors, and those are not microwaved. They always (laughs) take time to develop (laughs) and grow and find and shape and Uh, be able to be handed the responsibility of leading cohorts and leading students on monthly Zoom meetings. It is hard. It is challenging. It takes a commitment. And so praying for that. And I think just investigating. Uh, There are uh, things and uh, times and meetings that come up in various places where you can discover, wow, crosstalk really does make a difference. And I wonder if there's something that crosstalk uh, I could I could do with crosstalk personally, and uh, now again that's a dangerous question because <laughs> anytime you reach out to a, a church leader and say is there a way that I can volunteer, the odds are it might be yes. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but but praying about that and seeing how how people can do that, and of course, I I think one of the best ways, and this is just so so small, uh, to investigate whether giving crosstalk your time your finances, uh, your prayers on this kind of a level is to run an experiment. That is to take the Crosstalk podcast and share it with a friend and say, do you find this helpful? Do you find this encouraging and why? And then just listen to the stories. And if it is effective for your friend, imagine the difference that could be made if more people heard if more people were trained all around the world. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your time and appreciate your ministry, both in the local church and globally through Crosstalk Global. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated the chance, like I said, to to be on the other side of the glass. And we, we look forward to returning to the Psalms soon. Soon. The Crosstalk Podcast is a production of Crosstalk Global, equipping biblical communicators so every culture hears God's voice. To find out more about this educational nonprofit organization, please visit www.crosstalkglobal.org. You can support this show by rating it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find it. 
And if you're in the Yorba Linda area or somewhere in Southern California and would like to know even more about Crosstalk and meet Dr. Kent and others in person, we have a meeting for our 10 year anniversary celebration in Yorba Linda on October 21st. There will be a link in the show notes so you can find out more information if you're listening to this podcast in 2023 before October 21st. Be sure to listen next Friday and discover how to go deeper in your relationship with God. You won't want to miss it.